Hello everyone, so here we go again with the solutions of our uh, intercompany flow use case. I have Gatan here again with me. Hello Vicky. Hey Gatan. So let's see, uh, what are the configurations which I'm proposing you? Uh, based on what you were saying to me, I'm proposing to set up three different companies. Uh, it would be Portugal, which is the headquarters. They are manufacturing and there is a warehouse there. Um, we would have Germany with two different warehouses and we would have France with only one warehouse. So the place where we would need to set these up is the in, is in the general settings and we would need to uh, create the or like activate the intercompany transactions for all three companies. And we would want what we would want to do is uh, we would need to synchronize sales and purchase orders among the companies, because um, like that, whenever France is buying something from Portugal, for example, then uh, the sales order created will trigger automatically the purchase order on Portugal side. So this is how how we would uh, do that, and if we want the automatic validation. Uh, if we're checking the automatic validation option, then it means that uh, the purchase order on Portugal side, if I stay with my previous example, uh, the purchase order will be automatically validated upon creation. Okay, seems really good. Um, I just have one concern. So between Germany and France, for example, we uh, are going to have sales order and purchase order. But between the sale warehouse and the storage warehouse for Germany, we don't want that. We would like to have more uh, internal transfers. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Absolutely. So this is where I would come to the differences between the multi-company and the multi-warehouse, because the scenario with Germany, which you're defining, describing, is the multi-warehouse setup. So we need to differentiate. The multi-company is uh, between different legal entities. So Portugal is, is their, has their own legal entity, Germany has their own legal entity, and France as well. These legal entities trade with each other uh, via purchase orders and sales orders. But uh, the scenario which you described is a multi-warehouse setup. So in Germany, in that legal entity, we have two different warehouses. And uh, that, that means that they have maybe one building in Hamburg and the other building in Munich, and uh, they both belong to the same legal entity. So in that sense, you don't need the uh, purchase orders and sales orders, but internal transfers are perfectly fine between the two warehouses. Good, perfect. And how would you configure that? Um, so the thing is that, and I'm going back a bit to Portugal right now. So Portugal is different here uh, because here they are not only a warehouse, but they are also manufacturing. So here we need to activate the manufacturer to resupply and the manufacturing option at all. Um, the manufacturing wouldn't be there for Germany and to, for France because they're not manufacturing, they're just uh, storing and uh, selling uh, units. But what is uh, uh, specific for Germany is that uh, the Germany, the sales location is being resupplied from the storage warehouse. So uh, we will need to activate this resupply from Germany to storage, whereas Germany to storage doesn't need to resupply from the sales. So this, this is going to be the difference between the two. And then France will be configured the same way as the Germany to storage because there we don't have a resupply from because the resupply from option only works uh, in the multi-warehouse setup and it's not applicable for the uh, multi-company setup. Perfect. Okay. Uh, if you're going uh, further with the, with the setup, I need to show you how the product setup will work and this is our already our first scenario um, this is just a normal delivery from the country's warehouses directly to their customers so here you can see also on the screenshot that we have 10 units on hand for, for example for france and we do have reordering rules because we also want to maintain the stock levels in the warehouse so that means that 
uh, we can define a minimum stock level and a maximum stock level where um, uh, where Odoo needs to, I mean, in between which Odoo needs to move. If our inventory level reaches five units for in this uh, example, then Odoo will automatically trigger um, a purchase order. In that case, I will show you how can we see that in Odoo. So I'm just jumping into Odoo and, uh, and I'm going to the product itself. I'm right now in Germany but I'm switching, it's, it's very easy to switch between the, the companies. So here you can see that right now I'm in France and I'm uh, going to the bag, which I take as an example. And here you can see, as, as I had in the screenshot, we have 10 units on hand and we do have the reordering rules set up. If I'm clicking on this smart button, then we can see that we do have this reordering rule set up. You can see that this is for France and uh, we are triggering the, the buy route with this one. You can see the minimum quantity and the maximum quantity. So right now we are going to buy something uh, when, when the stock level reaches five units. Uh, going back to the bag, I would still want to show you the the uh, inventory setup that here we have the buy route. But uh, Vicky, there seems to be a problem because uh, we are in France and I see that the manufacturer route is activated, whereas only Portugal is manufacturing the bags. Yeah, that's a very good observation. And I believe that this gives uh, opportunity to misunderstandings indeed. So, but here, here we are to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why, why we have these two routes set up is that um, the products in general and also the routes are not company specific. You can define, you have the option to define a company or both on the product or, and I'm creating, a, I'm duplicating this window to bring you to the route setup. So if you're going to the buy route, for example, you can also define a company here but by default it's not so that all of the companies can use the same route um here with the with the inventory or what you see here in the inventory tab um if i'm going over to portugal portugal will have the same setup so in portugal uh, you can see that uh, it is also using the same setup so here you here it does make sense to manufacture and this is where the reordering rules are coming into the picture because here you are actually defining the preferred route here for Portugal, it's manufacturing. And here you can see that in the company you are uh, specifying here the Portugal uh, uh, company. Perfect. Okay. Is it okay? Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing though, uh, that's, what I, what I wanted to tell you now that we're here at the reordering rules, you do have the trigger, the automatic trigger, which uh, will have an influence on the inventory replenishment dashboard. So here, whatever you have on manual, you have the power to decide if you want to order or not. Uh, here you have a filter with the trigger manual. If I remove that, uh, and also all the other filters at this at this point I want to remove so that I can show you better the functionality. So here um, uh, you have all the all the units or the products which need to be reordered. One thing which we can do here uh, is clicking to the three little dots, and here we have the trigger. And here you can see that uh, these. Uh, will be created automatically um, whenever whenever the minimum quantity is reached. So with this, we don't have anything to do. But if we want to control all these uh, products manually, then we can we can click on order once, or we can also the we can also choose to automate the orders. So this is where the the trigger would would have an influence. Perfect. It seems very user friendly. Yes, it totally is, I think. If I'm going back to our presentation then, uh, so we've seen the 
the unit, so the product configuration, and if we're creating um, the quotation for the for the customer, it will only look into the well in in France. It will just just look into the French warehouse, and this is it. If we have inventory, then we can we can deliver. The complications are coming when <laughs> when we don't have the inventory. Um, and this is uh, where we need to where we need to define that on the product. Um, where does it need to purchase from? So that's very important. That even though uh, we have the reordering rule, uh, if we haven't defined the vendor for that specific product, where we where we are setting up the buy uh, route for the reordering rule then Odoo will not know where to buy it from. So it's very, very important to define uh, our reordering rule accordingly and the product data sheet as well. So if I go back to my database, I can show you, uh, and I'm going to France now. And if I'm going to the bag, then uh, you can see that I have set up uh, as vendor, uh, my Portuguese company, and of course I can set up a price and all that. And um, so if I go on the purchase tab, then uh, I can see that, that Portugal is set up as a vendor and the price is also set up there. Um, this is how Odoo will know where to buy the goods from when this uh, reordering rule will be triggered. Um, another thing though, is just a general functionality for the replenishment dashboard is that um, here I can, if I'm on manual, then I can still select the vendor if there are multiple vendors, for example. Not in this case, but it's a general functionality. Okay, that's handy. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is how it works. This is how I can, how we can configure the warehouses, the companies, and the products. So we are going uh, to the lower, lower sequence here. Okay, good. But I think um, in order to understand better and uh, for, for me to uh, assimilate all this knowledge, uh, what about we do a real uh, sales flow? That's very good. Works. That's very good. Of course, we can do that. So let's go back to our um, our database. Here I am. So I'm in France. Uh, I have just received uh, an order from my client. So I am entering it to, to my system. So I have my French customer, which wants a bag. They can want, well, I had 10 units. Um, if they if they want two units, then I can easily sell them these two units. So, and as you can see here, I have France, uh, the French warehouse, and uh, the graph shows me that I do have the product. So I'm super happy. I will be able to send it to them. Yeah. So I'm saving it. I'm confirming this sales order because they said that they definitely want it and as you can see here i have my delivery created and uh, if i'm clicking on the smart button i'm actually brought to uh, to the inventory app and i can already validate my my two units i don't want to very much elaborate on that because that's really basic functionality um, this is how it goes we're focusing here on the intercompany flows so I'm validating it, and uh, now my, my products are gone. Here, if I'm going back to the sales order, you can see that it's delivered. We can invoice it. It's the very, very standard flow. What happens, however, if I have my French customer and uh, I have my bag, but they want 10 units? Then I have a red graph here, which says that I only have eight units. So I still need this. And I'm confirming them because I know that I have my Portuguese shop. Um, 
and I'm going back to my inventory app. I'm going to see my replenishment dashboard. And here you can see that I have on hand eight units, and but I need two extra units to these eight. So what is happening is that Odoo says that I need to order 22 units. But why 22? I only need two units, no? Yes, but this is the benefit of the reordering rules that whenever Odoo triggers uh, a purchase, then it triggers to fill up to the maximum quantity. So this is why 22, because to this order I need two units, but then I will be at zero inventory. So we want to replenish to the maximum quantity. Okay, so it's good. It's like keeping a safety stock uh, always on hand. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, here I could, as I mentioned here, I could choose the vendor, but it's always Portugal. So I only need to click on order once, but one more thing that the benefit of the manual reordering rules is that we can choose another quantity. So if I know that uh, I will have another three units from another client soon coming in, I can already amend it to show like I need 25 units and I can order it at once. And here I have this message that a replenishment order has been generated. So I'm going to my purchase and I can see that I have this one for my Portuguese company and uh, a 25 unit replenishment. So all seems okay. I'm fine with the 25. Um, so I'm confirming it. So you can see that this one I have here my purchase order, the 001, but I do have now the vendor reference as 003. Would you mind going into the Portuguese store Not at <laughs> and all. see what happens there? Okay, so we are in Portugal. Let's see in the sales if we have received our quotation. Okay, good. It seems that we received our quotation from our French warehouse for 25 units of bags. But it seems as uh, this red flag is showing that we don't have enough stock. That's correct. So if I click on view forecast, okay, okay indeed, we don't have enough stock. We don't have any stock on hand. And these, the 25 units forecasted, are coming from my sale order for my French warehouse. Okay, so normally, uh, as the sale order is confirmed, it should trigger another rule if we've set up the products correctly. Indeed, indeed. So let's go to our inventory app and uh, look at the replenishment dashboard. Yes, correct. Okay, so if we remove everything, maybe let's group by category so that we can see it more clearly. Okay, good. Yes, indeed, here we have minus 25 units for the bags uh, and we have the opportunity to order once. So if we okay. click on it, normally it's already uh, automated. But... And again, uh, what you could see there is that uh, we had a forecast for 25 units and we have a maximum quantity of 100. So we, we will need to produce 125 units okay, to yeah. get to the maximum level. Makes sense. Okay. So let's see if we have it in, in the manufacturing. <laughs> so let's jump to the manufacturing app. Perfect. Here we have one manufacturing order for, as you just said, 125 units of bags. The uh, components are already available. So indeed, we need buttons, we need leather to produce the bags. Um, and here we can see as well that we need to produce an, uh, 125 units. So I think we are all good and we can mark as done. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, once, once we have uh, manufactured all the products, then indeed, of we can mark it as done. So I apply the quantities. Okay, good. Um, normally that means that we should have 125 units on hand. That's correct. Yes. Maybe let's jump to the product. Okay, indeed. We can see that uh, we've just received a 125 units in our stock. So we can proceed with the, uh, with the shipment of our... Yes, please uh, send it to France to me. Yes. <laughs> because my French customer is very much eager to get that. 
So if we look at the uh, delivery orders, mm -hmm. uh, we can see that there's one to process. So here um, it's to the French warehouse, uh, the French address, and for 25 units. So I can validate. Perfect. And now I can communicate to my French warehouse that we have sent the 25 units and they should receive it um, soon. Okay, let's see how soon we will receive that. If I'm going to my French warehouse, uh, I can go and see in my inventory that I have one receipt to process. And that's going to be, as you said, you, sh you shipped it to me. So I'm going to validate. I have received them, all the 25. So I'm super happy about that. So I'm validating this delivery. Uh, as you can see, the Odoo has uh, automatically applied the 25 unit and Mark has done. So let's check what we have on inventory right now. So we have the bags here and uh, we have on hand 33 because you remember we already had like eight units on stock. Uh, so I'm very happy because if I'm going to my overview, I already have my delivery order rating. Uh, so that I can send my units to my French customer. So you see here, I have the 10, 10 units demand and I have it reserved. So I'm very, very happy. And what I can still done, do here is I can uh, just basically validate it. So yeah, and we can see as well that the, uh, the graph has uh, changed from red to green. That's very good. And, uh... That's very true indeed. So you can see here, that uh, now we have the 23 units free stock and uh, this is basically our reserve 10 units for for the client so i'm going back on the bread crumbles and here i can validate this and i'm super happy to send the 10 units to my customer perfect so this is the flow this is how it goes from portugal to france we can we can follow up the the way of the products like product like this across the companies as well of course you do need the notification from portugal that it has that the goods have left the premises and france need to receive it so all these steps need to be done in order to to go through the whole flow okay perfect uh, so if I'm going back to my uh, presentation, uh, we have gone through all the all the product flow between France and Portugal. So now we can jump to the other scenario with the Germany uh, storage warehouse. So here, uh, as we discussed, um, we like the sales. Uh, warehouse is resupplying from the storage warehouse. Here we have something uh, this resupply from would trigger an extra route on the product for Germany, where we are actually resupplying the the goods from the storage facility. So this is this is what what appears on top of the the all the other routes for for the other uh, companies. And here, uh, the reordering rules will will be set up like for the inventory, uh, it will be a buy route. Uh, and for the sales uh, warehouse, it will be the resupply from, from the storage or inventory warehouse. So these, these two reordering rules will be needed in order to have the, the flow going. Um, so let's see. With pleasure. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the, let's say I'm, I'm having the, uh, the customer order again. And uh, you can help me if you want with the, with the storage. Perfect. So let's jump in. Um, we're here. I'm, I'm changing the French company now to Germany. So this is this is what happens. Don't be afraid. There is an error, uh, but it's absolutely normal because 
I'm, I was in my French company and certainly the German company doesn't have that uh, record. So the, this error message is just perfectly normal. It is, it is because of the multi-company. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back to the, to the main screen. And uh, yeah, so as I said, I, I have just received an order from my German client. They are a new client, so I need to add them also, and it's super easy as well. So my German client is ordering um, shoes from me. Yeah. Um, I don't have it right now, but let's see. Uh, so you, here you can see that it goes directly to the sales warehouse. So it's, it's looking at the sales warehouse, but in the sales warehouse, I don't have this product because you see the, the graph is, is zero or the graph is red and it shows that it's it's it has zero availability um i am still saving it and i am confirming this so i'm going to my inventory and uh, i will see my dashboard because right now i don't see any anything uh, created automatically so i'm going to my dashboard to ha have some help and here you ha here i am um, there is a reordering role on manual trigger so that I can, I can show you and explain you a bit like what is happening. So here again, we see that I have one unit forecasted, but I don't have anything on hand and, um, and I'm going to replenish 21 units. So I'm going to order it at once and uh, don't be afraid <laughs> we're gonna have something to process here you see so on my on my stock i will have a delivery order and i'm going in there and you see here i have my physical locations inter warehouse transit and this is the result of a uh, configuration on the route I'm, I'm going to show you how it exactly happens so as you could see the route is uh, this supply product from Germany inventory. And this is what happens here. So we have this uh, rule, which goes from the inventory location to, I mean, the German inventory warehouse to the physical locations inter warehouse transit. And then the sales warehouse will pull the, the products from the inter warehouse transit location. So this is where this, um, there is a miraculous place between the two warehouses. Um, and this is how we can, we can set up that it's not a sales or the purchase order, as I mentioned to you earlier, but it's just a transit look through a transit location. You have an internal transfer. So this is what happens in the background. But what you would basically see is that you have a delivery order from the inventory location in Germany, and um, and that would that would move the products there. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm validating this order uh, because I do have reserved the 21 units, so I'm super happy with it. I'm validating it, I'm applying, and now it's done. So if I'm going to the reporting, I can see that uh, the shoes, I have these, uh, well, altogether 29 units on, on the inventory. Um, that's correct. And here, I need to still receive these products. And you can see that I do have a delivery order here, one waiting. Uh, this is going to be to my customer. Uh, but this, first of all, I need to process the receipts um, from the Inter Warehouse Transit to my uh, sales warehouse stock. So right now I have this one and I know that it has been sent from there. So I'm validating that. And right now I have this, again, going back to the inventory report. And here I, you can see that I have 20 units on the sales warehouse and 29 units on the, on the inventory warehouse. 
as available quantity. And you can see that here I have a cumulative quantity for the whole company. So if I'm going back to my inventory overview, you can see that the delivery order, which uh, towards the customer, which is towards the customer, it is now uh, ready, ready to be processed. And that's only a matter of validation to, to get it to my client. So my client will be very happy that they will get their one unit <laughs> delivered. So this is it. Perfect. Seems to be really fluid. Okay. Yes, indeed. I believe it's it's uh, really easy to to replenish it. And and what I what I also like is that here in the in the overview, you can always follow what what you have to process. Definitely, this view per warehouse is really handy. And I imagine that if you don't have enough stock in the Germany inventory, then it will trigger as well a buy route uh, to Portugal. Is that it? That's correct. It depends also on the product setup. So we are on, on a, uh, in the product data sheet. So you can see here also that the buy route is also activated. And as we discussed it before, we also need to give the purchase tab. On the purchase tab, we also need to add the vendor. So here we have done that. And um, yeah, we definitely we definitely can issue a, a buy, well, a purchase order to, to Portugal indeed with okay. the buy route. <laughs> okay, so this was our... Uh, second part with the German warehouses and uh, now the tricky one comes <laughs> this is um, this is with the with the serial numbers so we were saying that um, we want to use for the limited edition and and very special products uh, we want to use the serial number, and this is um, possible with the with the product uh, configuration. So far, we have used the tracking being no tracking, uh, but right now we we can set it up so we can set up on the product level that uh, we want to track it per serial number. So the bags and the shoes were not serialized, but the belts we definitely want serialized because, because those are very, very expensive ones and limited editions and we want to track them. Exactly. It's very important for us to track uh, either the uh, raw materials, the raw mm -hmm. components for these expensive um, products or the finished products um, from the sale order to the, uh, well, from, sorry, from the manufacturing order to the mm -hmm. sale order. And is it possible to do that, uh, for example, between Portugal and France or? That's, that's unfortunately not possible. Uh, what you mean, I guess, is that, uh, what Portugal sends, um, then, then France will not take it over or Germany. Um, it is because the serial numbers are specific for a company. So they want follow over to to the other company it it is one of those uh set of pieces of data which um, which are pretty much only for the company and and uh, the other company cannot have, have access to to that set of data okay um so this is this is something which we need to pay attention to but in a normal daily routine um, you might use barcodes. You definitely have have a label on the product that this is the serial number. So I believe that whenever France is receiving a product physically, they will have the serial in front of them, and and they will enter uh, that serial number which which they would receive. Or if it's if it's a if it's a regular shipment. Or in this case, which which we're gonna gonna see, um, a notification can can go from from Portugal to to France or Germany, whichever location we are sending it to, and uh, like that we can um, or they can also register it in in their system. So I think I think it can be worked around. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Um, what is the scenario for us? So here we would like to um, have a sale for a German customer 
This German customer wants a, a piece of our limited edition belt and uh, we want the PO to be automatically created to Portugal. And if the Portugal doesn't have any stock, if our Portugal warehouse doesn't have any stock for this limited edition belt, then it should create a manufacturing order. And this manufacturing order creates a specific serial number, which is going to be set up for this unique um, unit of belt. And uh, this belt should be then delivered to the German warehouse and then delivered to the customer. So how should it look? All right, let's see then. Um, let's go to Odoo. And again, I think I will need your help also with the Portuguese manufacturing process. With pleasure. So here I am in Germany and uh, I have just received an order for my German client. So they want that I'm sending them the belt, like just one belt because it's really limited edition. They just want one. So I'm confirming the order. Uh, I have the outbound delivery, but I also have, I need to see on my replenishment dashboard what is going on with my limited edition belt. So you can see that here I have a one unit forecast and I can order it at once because it's, it's really limited edition with the manual reordering rule. I want to, want to keep a very close view on that. Uh, so I'm ordering it at once. I can see that I have this uh, purchase order generated. I could have clicked it there, but I can also go to my purchase app and I can see that, yes, indeed, this uh, request for quotation is there. Apparently for Germany, I don't have necessarily... No, I'm, I am now confirming this order and then it's going to create a, a sales order in, in Portugal. So please help me do Help me looking for the 10, number 10 sales order in Portugal. And okay. So if we switch to the Portugal database, then if we go to the sales app, we should see this number, uh, this sale order number 10, perfect for Yes, one unit of the limited edition belt. And we see that we have one delivery that should be for um, our Germany, our German warehouse. Perfect. So if we click on check availability, we see that we don't have any line that has been created because the product is not available yet. What does it mean? Maybe we should go and have a look at our replenishment dashboard as well to see how we should um, deal with this product. So limited edition belt, we see that we have a minus one unit in forecast and the preferred route is manufacture. That's normal because as we are in Portugal, we are going to manufacture the product directly from here. We have the trigger manual as well and we can click on order once. Here we can see that the following replenishment order has been generated. So it's a manufacturing order. So if we go to our manufacturing app, perfect. Here we can see that we have one manufacturing order that is confirmed for our limited edition belts. So we need leather, we have some leather in stock, so we can proceed with the manufacturing order. But as we are dealing with this product, the, with the limited edition belts, with lots and serial number, we should first create a new serial number. So we have created the serial number number two, we can mark the manufacturing order as done. And now we can proceed with the delivery to our German um, warehouse. So if we go to our inventory overview, we can see that we have one delivery order to process to our German warehouse for one unit of limited edition belt with the serial number uh, 002. We can click on yep. set quantities, validate, and now you should uh, receive it directly in your warehouse. Vicky. Very nice. Let me see how it goes. So if I'm going on my inventory app, I'm expecting uh, a receipt to my warehouse. And uh, yeah, indeed, I do have this here. And... Uh, one thing which I need to do here, because it's a serialized product, I will need to uh, 
check if my serial number is correct. And yes, indeed, this is the serial which I see on the product which I received from you. So I can assign this serial number and I'm confirming it. And I need to, the only thing which, which is needed to validate this receipt. Um, what I see here that I do see this delivery order, uh, which is to my customers. So I can now, I'm, I'm free to, to send it. And you see here, I have the serial number, which, which you sent me from Portugal. And this is the one unit which I need to send to my clients. So I'm super happy and I can just validate this or this. Perfect. And what was this um, traceability button, smart button that we could see on the, uh, uh, on the delivery orders? Okay, it's a very good question. Let's go and find it out. So you see here the traceability smart button. Um, basically, when we have a lot managed or serial managed product, then this is the basic functionality that we want to trace the product back. And what is happening is that you see here, if you click on the smart button, you do see the traceability report. And then in this traceability report, you can see the movements what, which happened to, to this product and to this serial more closely. So you see that this is the limited edition, but this is the 0002 serial number. And first it came from vendors to our inventory and from our stock, it went to our customers location. And of course, if you zoom in to this one, you will also see like which customer it went to. Okay. So I think it's a very, very nice feature to, to trace back all your, all your products. Okay, perfect. So this is it. This is how it's going. Good. So it looks like we can practically do uh, anything that we want uh, for our business on this Odoo database. But we just have one last question. Um, if, for example, for this limited edition belt, we would like to deliver directly from Portugal to the German customer, mm -hmm. would this be possible? Absolutely, absolutely. This is what we call dropshipping. So in this situation, uh, what you need to do, um, we have the dropship uh, route already created in, in Odoo when activating the dropshipping function. So in the purchase app, you have the dropshipping uh, checkbox, which you can check and then this will activate also the dropshipping route. Uh, you need to watch out because basically in a multi-company setup, it's a bit tricky um, because you might want to only dropship in, in our case from Portugal through, well, to a German client from Portugal to the client, but you don't want to use this route for any other um, companies and as we said before the routes are company are not company specific by default so what we want to do is to create a route which is company specific because we want to create for germany uh, a company specific route and this is this is what you can see here so here in the route you can define that you can duplicate, of course, the, the dropshipping route. And then this duplicate should be called, let's say, dropship DE. And then here we can tie it to Germany, uh, to the German company. And uh, on the product data sheet, it will look like you will have an extra a dropship BE route, but it's only being displayed in the German company. So if you're switching to Portugal, then it won't be visible anymore. Um, and of course, you will need a reordering rule uh, for, for the dropship DE as preferred rule. So I'm going to show you how it works in Odoo directly. So still we're in the German warehouse. Um, I'm going to show you the product. So that's still our limited edition belt. Um, here in the inventory, you see here we had the buy route by default, but uh, I'm removing the buy and I'm activating the dropship DE, which is only visible here. So I'm saving this and I can show you that if I'm changing the company to Portugal, 
Then, uh, and I'm going back to the inventory tab. You don't see the dropship BE, DE, <laughs> sorry, uh, route. And this is because it is a company specific route. So I'm going back to Germany right now. And the other thing which I wanted to check is my, my reordering rule. So for now, I do have the buy route, but this one I would like to change to dropship because that's going to be my, my basic one. And having the quantity set to 0, 0 will mean that uh, it's basically a make-to-order uh, functionality. So each and every sales order will trigger one, uh, one order for, for this product. So now I have my preferred route as dropship. So I'm ready to receive my order from the German client again. Perfect. Because they thought that they really liked the uh, they really like the product and they immediately want to receive something. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go through the uh, all the process steps as we described before. So I'm confirming this order. Um, since it's uh, it's like a dropship, I do have already the purchase. Uh, here in the smart button. So it's not necessarily the delivery what I have, but the purchase. So if I click on that, you can see that uh, a purchase uh, like an RFQ or request for quotation has been created for Portugal. So I can confirm this order. And as we saw it before, the purchase order will trigger automatically a uh, sales order. So it's your turn to show okay. us what ha what's <laughs> happening in Portugal. Okay, let me see if we can find back our sale order. It should be number 12 normally. Perfect, it's here. So I have one sale order for one unit of the limited edition belts, and it should be delivered directly to um, our customer in Germany. So we have our delivery here, and we are going to look at our replenishment dashboard so we can see that uh, for our limited edition belts, we have one unit to manufacture. We can click on order ones and the manufacturing order number six has been created. If we jump back to the manufact manufacturing app, we can see that our manufacturing order is ready to be processed because we have all the components in stock. We can assign a, a serial number to this product, which is number three. We can mark it as done, and now we can proceed with the delivery to the customer. So if we click on inventory, we can we have one um, delivery to process. And here we can see that the delivery address is already German client and not anymore the German warehouse as we had earlier. Yeah. So if we set the quantities, perfect, and now we validate and the client just has received um, his limited edition belts. Very good. Perfect. Okay, so let's see what happened uh, with our order. So you have delivered it uh, from Portugal to our client, and I also have my, my dropship delivery here. So what we need to see here is that um, in from Portugal you have you have shipped it, but in Germany, I still have my my order half delivered, and uh, I only can make it make it as as done or mark it as done when I when I, when I validate this dropship delivery, which means that I'm receiving it from Portugal, but then it goes to to my that partner location customers to my customers. So this is how how my sales order in the German facility will be will be closed and finalized. So I'm, I need to just real quickly validate this one. But of course, I need to supply the, the serial number. So it was the 03 serial number. And I can also mark it here as done. I can save it and validate it. So this is this is the final step which which will close uh, my whole process in the German plant, uh, not only in the Portuguese one. So right now I can see that it's delivered and, and this one is done. Perfect. Thank you, Vicky. I think uh, with the 
a database like that, we are ready to go live and to use Odoo for our inventory management system. Very good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you, Gaetan. Thank you. Thank you.